Hi, I'm Tony Swinehart with MCP's Full Court Press, brought to you by Spectrum Health Ludington Hospitals Orthopedics. Today we are at Johnny Wilcox's house. Did I pronounce that right? Yep, yep. John. Wonderful. John. Okay, John. And Chaz Major, who has just recently won some snowmobile racing trophies and we want to talk to them. First of all, John, you're the one that kind of builds, finds these old snowmobiles. Yeah. Now, explain, because they are vintage, correct? Right. So explain what you do when you find one, how you rebuild it, that type of thing. Well, we basically pick up old sleds wherever we can, like this sled, come out of a guy's backyard sitting in the weeds, Right. for free <laughs> right? and um, strip them to the bare chassis, go through every nut and bolt and component, uh, put a racing track on them, studs, aluminum racing skis, carbides. We run in a class called super stock so we can modify the engine internally. Okay. But we got to run the stock exhaust and carburetor and the sled has to appear factory looking to a point you can okay. change seat and tank but it has to keep the factory hood and okay. the factory look of the sled okay and, uh, same with that little single cylinder it's super stock single this is super stock 340 fan okay and there's classes for that sled mm -hmm. specifically okay and uh the classes are are made up uh to keep it fair, you know, you, right. you, you're going to race a similar sled. Right. And uh, then it's up to the setup and the rider to see what he can do in that class. Okay. So now you also used to race, correct? Yes. Yeah. And that's how you met Chaz's father. Well, I worked with Chaz's father oh, okay. for, for 30 years at oh. Arsco, but, okay. but I've known Chaz since he was a little boy, you know. Okay. I remember when he was born. And, mm. um, he started in the junior classes. Okay. Me and, me and his dad built a sled together for him and his dad and me. We started at Whiskey Creek. Okay. They reopened in like 2012 or 13. Okay. Which is close for us. So, right. So we went to Whiskey Creek and that's where he started. Okay. As a youth, you know, youth right. class, junior class, whatever. Okay. So, Chaz, now... You started when you were about 10 or 11, right, with the junior class, and then what is the age that you graduated to, was it 16, that you can race the, the larger sleds? I think it's like 14 or okay. 14 years old that you can start racing the larger, the adult classes, but I think I was 15 maybe when we started. Okay. 15, we, I, somewhere around there. Okay, and but now you travel not just to Whiskey Creek, but you go all over, and especially a lot of northern Michigan yep. and even in the Upper Peninsula. So, where are some of the biggest racetracks that you've been at? Uh, Sault Ste. Marie. We were just were up there last Tuesday. Okay. We were up at the it's the I five hard track to have an inch night up there. Okay. The biggest event we've probably been to. Okay, and that's the the big track yep. that's now is that the biggest track in the state of Michigan then? Yes. Oh wow. What okay, time? and is that the one that you won your first places? Yes. Wonderful. So, so this is something that you have all been doing for such a long time. So, is it something that you're going to continue to do for years and years to come? Yeah. Yes, wonderful. And John, so when you find something and you rebuild it, what is your goal? To build something that'll run up front and, and win. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ultimately. Right. Um, you, you just, you know, it, it's a process really because you may build the sled, go race it, and it'll, it'll need more work, clutching, okay. engine, okay. Uh, setup to get it, the rider happy. So, right. So he likes the feel. And the better he, more comfortable he is on it, the faster he can go. Okay. And it, you gotta, you gotta work up to being fast in a class. Uh, it's very rare to, for a new guy to show up in super stock and immediately run up front. Oh, you know, wow. It, it took us a little bit. Right. You know, and, and, but these, both these sleds now are, are pretty good. They'll, they're competitive anywhere we take them. 
Okay. But you know, when I started at Whiskey Creek, we we kind of stunk. We, right. we we weren't winning. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we were okay. But right. It was a learning curve, and it it right. takes a while, you know. And and, and the riders got to be comfortable on them because yeah. uh, you can't go fast if you don't like the way the thing feels or handles. This is true. So for for you, Chaz, you you have to make sure that you're handling it. Now, when you race, though, are there categories for ages or no? Is this just all adults, all any age? Yeah, it's there is there is like a master's class, which is 60 and older for that people that are 60 and older can run. But there's mainly the just an adult class, and then there's the youth class. Okay. And then the youth class is what you had explained were like the, the young kids, yeah, the junior class. That's where I started. Where you started. Okay. So kind of go through, like, when you're racing and you get on the track, is there a countdown? Is there a light? How does that work? At most tracks, they just have a flag man. Okay. They use, they use a flag to start the race, but at some races, they use lights. Okay. Like green. To, to use the like pretty much like drag racing lights. Right. Okay. Okay. And when you're racing, how many laps do you do normally? Uh, usually for the feature, it's four to five laps. Okay. And with that big track, that was approximately a mile. Yes. So how many laps did you do on that one then? It was five laps. It was five laps. But then you said there's also a master class. Do they do more laps? No. No. Oh, it's just about the yeah. same amount of laps. So, when you're racing, um, how many sleds race at a time? Are they? Do they have different heats? If there's enough people, like if there's, there's been days where there's 50 people in the class. Mm -hmm. So you have to do heat races to eliminate people. Okay. Because they usually only can fit about 12 sleds on the track at once. Okay. Feature. So. Okay. And so time-wise, like, what is your fastest time? We run up there, 51 seconds with the Sioux. Yeah, we hit, we usually, I mean, we don't, there's times we don't really keep too much track of. Okay. But, like at the Sioux, they had, they tracked times, and I think it was 51 seconds to go around a mile. Really? Eight and that was for one lap, though, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking, wow, five laps in 51 seconds is, they, is they, a lot. They put a transponder on the sled. Okay. And it, it records your lap speeds and, and times. Okay. Well, actually, it records your how many seconds to go around the track. Okay. And uh, it's just a way for them. They'll print it out after the race and show the differential between first, second, third, fourth. And you can also get your lap times on every lap on your particular sled. And it's, it's a way if you had a photo finish or something, okay, you could see the milliseconds of difference. Yes. But it'll give you your speed and or, or your time and you can calculate your average mile per hour. Like, okay. like I think his average mile per hour up there was around 71 miles an hour, which okay. straightaway speeds were 81, 82 miles an hour. Okay. But on a 340 fanner that's pretty good um, okay yeah there, okay there were sleds up there running in the 90s you know oh wow yeah there was some pretty good stuff up there in different classes okay so what's the difference between like the single you said that's a single stock that's single a, cylinder single yeah, single, it, single cylinder single cylinder engine one one cylinder engine uh 250 cc's uh, we run a class at bevra which is um they're, a, they're probably the premier vintage series in Michigan and usually have the best competition there. A lot of guys that compete at Eagle River, which is the world championships run at Bevera in Michigan. Okay. A lot okay. of good riders in Michigan, actually, and good sleds. Um, but that, that sled will run in a class called uh, Post-1975 Single Cylinders Super okay. Stock. Okay. And it's got to just meet the criteria of the class, single cylinder engine, uh, same rules can in modify the engine internally, but but the outside has to look appear fairly stock looking. Okay. Hood, uh, you got to resemble the machine. It was new to a point. Right. Right. Know, but but yeah, you you build to the rules pretty much. Right. Yeah. Now and then, so would you get a, a different? You of course have different speeds for the oh, different yeah. sleds yeah, too. This sleds faster. This sleds faster. Yeah. Okay. That was 82 miles an hour. That was 67. Yeah. Oh wow. At the Sioux. Okay, okay. And do you, so you do both yeah. then? Okay. 
So then you also have to, like, as John's building them for you, so they have to both feel good to you. Like, yeah. as far as when you sit in them, the way they handle, you know, as far as your legs and everything, everything has to pretty much Yeah, we fit. shape the seats and stuff to, we cut them down until they feel comfortable, because we want to be lowered to the ground, but. Right. But you want to, but comfort, of course, probably helps you go faster. Of course. And helps yeah. you maneuver better around the corners and that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and as the rider's riding, he, he would give you feedback in between races. Say, it isn't turning good, it's pushy, you know, it don't want to turn, it wants to go straight. And you'd adjust the suspension accordingly to get it right for him. Okay. And track conditions will change through the day. Cold weather, warm weather, hard ice, soft ice. It, it's its quite a science to it, really, to, yes. to get it right for the guy sitting on the seat. Right. I you can know. imagine, because every track you go to, too, depending on how far up north they are, or, to, uh, how yeah. far south they are, there's a difference in temperature to cause the difference in the track, right. everything and, and like that. And we do race on some lakes. Okay. So lake ice is different. Lake ice is usually harder. Okay. Requires adjustments for that. Oh wow. Oh, I would I would be very nervous. Well, we, we, <laughs> in the UP where we race on the lake, the ice is 2 feet thick. Oh, so, okay. So it's yeah, yeah. It's plenty safe. Because there have been winters where it hasn't really gotten as yeah. cold as like like this winter is one of the first winters we've had where it has the temperature has dropped for a number of weeks. We, we've actually had good ice at the tracks we've been at so far. We've yeah. had some okay. years where we've only raced two times because the, there's no ice. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Keep losing the racetrack. You know, and the, most of the tracks are built by volunteers that put a lot of time in. Right. And they struggle with the weather and it can be yeah. a lot of work yeah. for nothing at times. They'll get a track built and lose it, you know. For, yeah. So. Because we just Aww. put a track in the middle of the one, our main track we go to is out in the middle of a farm field. Okay. They make it right in the fall and then they just dump water into the, make the shape of the track. Okay. So, so it's actually ice that you're racing on every single time Clear then? Clear ice, yeah. Okay. No yeah. snow at all. No snow at all. Okay. Yeah. And is that what, and because like a newer snowmobile, because these are all, what year did they start and what year did they end for vintage? Uh, 1985 is the cutoff for um, these type of sleds. They're starting to move. They're starting to move into the independent front end sleds, like from the 90s. Okay. So you, they run them up to 1995. They're starting to move to that more, and and it's becoming quite popular. I, I think the goal for vintage is to make use of these old sleds that are just sitting around. Yes. In in the guys that grew up on them really liked them in the day and they see a new life for them with vintage racing yes so it's it's a pretty cool thing really and if you go to a vintage event there'll be like the, marion has a snow festival where they have a show a swap meet a race going on at the same time it's really cool oh wow that's coming up on the 19th okay yeah and it, there's a lot of stuff like that around the state for vintage okay it, you know it's it's some people don't hear about it, but if you're in the snowmobile community, everybody knows, knows about it. Yeah, right. It's like anything like that, you know. It gets a lot of press from, like, internally yeah, especially, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Chaz, tell us about your, the trophies. You kind of have them. Um, I saw one, the wind was kind of blowing just a hair. <laughs> yeah. These two, so, these two trophies are from the the Sioux race. Okay, and that's the big track. Yep. And that was and those were two first places that you got one for each sled, right? Yes. Okay. And then what are these? These are from uh Bevra. That's our main track we race at. Okay. And the these ones are the first place ones and those are some second place. Okay. And then oh, okay. Cuz you can definitely tell the difference between yes. Like the first place ones yeah. are a little bit bigger We've and got nicer. One guy that's kind of a pain in the butt and keeps getting the first place in the one class. On oh, <laughs> so that's why you've got the two second he's place. He's ours, but he's beating us. Aww. We gotta keep working on him. Okay, so and then so and you obviously really enjoy this and you and enjoy participating with Chaz and continuing to do this. So will you be also doing this for as long as you can? I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's something to do in the winter. Yeah. Know? We farm and stuff, so in the winter we're kind of slow and 
don't do right. much. So, <laughs> right, yeah. So we, we do this. <laughs> All right. Well, wonderful. Well, I appreciate you taking time out of your morning. It's cold, but not too cold. Yeah, I mean, bad. it could right. be it could be worse. Right. Uh, and this is absolutely wonderful. You know, we've been trying to get into the snowmobiling community. So this is something that a lot of people are going to take a lot of interest in. And I just appreciate you taking time and Chaz, you as well, because I know you have to go to school, to yeah. college soon. So, um, and I wish you all the luck for the rest of the season and especially Saturday the 19th. Uh, yeah. So for more news, go to masoncountypress.com.